to episode one, 500, not 100, 538 of the Pittsburgh Nerd Podcast. <laughs> I'm Sean. I'm Nancy, and this is the only podcast that says. Who says the 50 caliber is an impractical round? Is that it? That is it. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, sure. I was expecting more, but you're sitting there looking at me. Nope, that's it. That's that's the that's the quote for the week. Wait. You don't know the movie unless you watched uh, the Meg two uh, in the past couple of days. No, no, I haven't even seen Meg one. Okay, well, I, I want to. I watched Meg two today. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because I've seen the first one. Was, I enjoyed the first one. Is it as enjoyable or more enjoyable? Sometimes those sequels are a little bit better. Eh, it wasn't. But it was still fun. I mean, it's goofy. It's wait, is Jason Statham in it? Yes. Oh, oh well, then it's watchable. Yeah, that's all you need. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> it's it's fun because it's Statham. It's goofy. Yeah. I mean, it's megalodons. You know, it's giant squids. Right. It's yeah. oh, it's a squid, not a. Oh no, there, there's giant sharks. Oh. And in this one, there's a giant squid. Ooh, giant squid. Yeah, I mean, it, it's. It's it's complete and total bullshit, but it's fun, complete and total bullshit. Right, yeah. You know. Yeah. And again, I mean, my, my, not nearly as ridiculous as the Fast franchise, but still, it was cotton candy for the brain. Right. You know. Yeah. Yum. So, yeah, indeed. <laughs> yeah. So well, I'll probably end up watching them sometime in my life. When there's like 15 of them, like, you know, Sharknado. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. Like it, it, it's like, it's like a really well done Sharknado. Oh, okay. Like it's 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 goofy, but it looks really good. Yeah. You know. Right. Um. So I watched that, and I I, I was an enjoyable like hour and forty five minutes. Ooh. Um. Not even the two hour mark. No, no, didn't, didn't even get the two hour mark. Like I'm looking at, I mean, maybe it was two hours. I'm not quite sure, but um. Well, I can tell you right now. Hello, Beanie. Was she being a little friendly tonight? She is, yeah. Yeah, I must have something. She, she must smell the. Yeah, yeah. she must smell the fryer on yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> but uh. I'm gonna look it up right now. Hold okay. On. It's Meg Two, t- number tr- two. Yeah, Meg Two, the trench. It is officially two hours and fifty-two. No, it's two minutes and fifty-two minutes. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. I apologize. You're looking at a trailer. Yeah, I just saw the number and went with it. Where does it say how long it is? Usually right up at top, right? Let me see. Wait. One hour and fifty-six minutes. There you go. Yeah. So one forty-five with the trailer or with yeah. the um, yeah credits. Yeah, so... Is he the only one from the first one that's in it? No. No. Um, like, the guy who played the dad in the uh, the Walking Dead spinoff... Fear of the Walking Fear Dead? Fear of the Walking Dead, yeah. The guy who played the dad in that first season. Uh, yes, yes, uh, yes, yeah, he's, yes. He's in that. Yeah, because I think he's only in it for that season, right? I think so, too. Yeah, he dies in the second season, so I can't remember. But um, he's in it... Uh, And some Chinese people because it's partially financed by the, the the Chinese government. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. So there's a bunch of people I haven't I've never heard of, and you know, but overall I, I enjoyed it. Right. Well, as long as you enjoyed it. Yeah. That's what matters. I had fun with it. I had fun with it. Yeah. I watched a bunch of stuff this weekend. I watched a show on Netflix you might enjoy. It's called Unstable. And it's got, um, oh, I can't think of his name now. Rob Lowe. He's the main character. Uh, oh, yeah, a little Rob Lowe action. Yeah. I like that. Because I've been re-watching Parks and Rec. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I get it. But he, um, it's him and his son. Oh, his son in real life? Or yeah, his son, okay. his son in real life. And uh, the concept of the show is like Rob Lowe plays this, you gotta stop knocking shit around like that's just... Clanging on the. the I microphone. apologize. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but uh, I'm too loud there, but I don't talk loud enough. No, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. We'll um, switch them. <laughs> yeah. But Ro- Rob Lowe plays this like eccentric inventor billionaire 
and his wife had died a few months ago. So now his entricities are out of control. Mm-hmm. And they're bringing in his son to hopefully balance him. And, you know, it's about fathers and sons. And right. It, it was entertaining. Like, I enjoyed it. Like, it, it, it was eight episodes. They're like a half hour each. And uh, it was mildly amusing. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we'll have to check that out, too. I, I, I would recommend Like, if you like Raw Blow, like, I, I highly recommend it. Like, I enjoyed it because it's because of Raw Blow. Right. His son's pretty funny. What's his son's name? I can't remember off the top of my head. But, like, it's he's like a miniature Rob Lowe. It's, like, kind of scary. Like, it's perfect casting because he's playing his son. And so, like, the, like, mannerisms. Right. Like, mirror. Like, right. you look at him, like, yeah, Rob Lowe makes that same face. Or uh, he has that same gesture. Like, it's, like, so, like, him, like them playing his own son. Is like, his name Todd? No, I can't remember. Oh, i got to see who this is. John? Maybe that was it. Let me let me pull up I John am. Owen Lowe? I think so, yeah. What's the name of this movie? Un- it's a show. It's called Unstable. Sorry. Unstable. Got it. Not the yeah, John show. Owen Lowe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he does kind of look like him. Yeah. I always liked his brother Chad Lowe. Whatever happened to him? I don't know. But he ha- But he's like... Like a smaller version of Rob, and like like there are like certain things like like mannerisms and stuff. You just like oh yeah, like I could see where you picked that up and right, you know yeah. shit like that. Yeah. Um. But I mean, it's a fun show. Like I enjoyed it. It was like. But but I wonder, does he have like the natural talent, or did he actually go to like the actors guild, whatever the hell these people do? I forget. Or, Always going to go to these, acting school. Well, yeah, you think he did that, or do you think he just naturally talented, kind of like Tom Hanks' son? He's just naturally got it. I don't know. Like I really don't know. Like it's a, it's an odd question because it's like it's that it becomes that thing of like okay, so if you make the decision, you're going to go into the family business. Like how. How hard are you fighting against nepotism? Mm -hmm. Because it's like, are they giving you a break because you're Rob Lowe's son? Or are they giving you a break because you're that good? Uh, You know what I mean? I often wonder that, yeah. Does the name carry you so far? Or does it carry you all the way? Because we know it does in some cases. It does. Like There are some people where you're just like... And the only reason, like... You're here is because, because your parents. Yeah. yeah, but there there are other people though. Like, like you you look at um. I can't think of her name. Coppola's daughter. Yes. Like I mean, she did Marie Antoinette. She's you know she's done a bunch of stuff and she's an extraordinarily talented director. Wait, is it, um, I'm thinking of somebody else. Wait, who is the chick that was in um? Wasn't she a Coppola? She was in that show. They had they sent in all the knots to try to keep it going. Oh, um, I can't remember. Oh my god, what is that show? I can see the cover of the DVD. Oh, <coughs> I don't know. It has the dude from Scream in it. I freaking love him. Uh, Keith Ulrich. What was that show's name? Because it has the guy that's in... Didn't he go to The Walking so, Dead? Sophia Coppola was, is the name of the director I'm thinking of. Okay. I know her, yes. Okay. Um, what, I mean, she's mostly a director. I, mean, I know she's done some acting. She was in... Didn't she do The she, Outsiders? Well, I know she was in... No, that was... She was in Godfather 3, and people were just like, She should never act again. Yeah, stick behind the camera. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was before she even directed anything. Oh. Um. I'll look it up. I'll look up Skeet Ulrich and see what I'm thinking yeah, of. I don't know what you're thinking of. I don't see anything that she did Hold like on. that. Like, it's all like Not Madonna her, videos and shit. Yeah. Skeet. There we go. He did that movie. She wasn't, she was an outsider, though. But she, she just labeled as a little girl. 
I knew she had something to do with the outside. And she, she was in Rumblefish as well. But, um... Jer- go ahead. What's your show? Jesus, how many times are you going to interrupt me before I can talk? My bad. <laughs> That's the third time. Jericho is oh, the show okay. I'm talking about. Yeah, no, she wasn't in that, no. No, not... I'm not saying it was... Right. Oh, my Lord. I'm not saying it was her. Okay. I'm saying it was a Coppola. Okay. But I don't know. I'm looking it up now. Okay. Okay. That's what I was confusing her with this person I'm okay. thinking of. She was the farmer guy's girlfriend. Uh, right. Stanley. Yeah. She, she had Alicia. Co- right. Yeah. I was confusing who you're talking about right. with her. And I was like, wait, she was in Jericho. And I was like, oh, I don't think this is the same person. No. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, like there are there are people like like glad we killed her dead up. Yeah, he, he but but Nicholas Cage changed his name so he wouldn't, wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you typecast know, because he was a Coppola. You know, um, Emilio Estevez. Right. Right. You know, didn't yep. change. You know, well, he he kept his name because he didn't want to be because his actual name is Emilio Estevez. Yeah. Where Martin Sheen changed his name and. Yeah. You know. But then you have the opposite. Where, like, say, Joaquin Phoenix, when he was young, changed his name to Leaf because yeah. all his family had these and he wanted to be associated with the family. He right. didn't think Joaquin was a good, it needed to be like, what was it, Rainbow, right? Waterfall or something like that, River. River. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he got Joaquin. He's like, Where, where's my nature name? So yeah. he took Leaf Phoenix, if anybody remembers that. The one movie he's in where they accidentally send the space shuttle up to space. That he's in, he's he's under Lee Phoenix. Yeah, Lee Phoenix, yeah. yeah. But that then, was very confusing for me. I'm sure, yeah. When he came out Joaquin, I'm like, wait, where did this Phoenix come from? And I was like, he looks like them. And then I was like, oh my god, that's Leaf. Well, it's like, <laughs> it's like the evolution of you have John Mellencamp, right. John Cooper Mellencamp, <laughs> yeah. and then finally you just have John Mellencamp. Yeah. Well, who yeah. was the other one? Prince and the sign. The, the, yeah. the symbol. They have like identity crisis, and we have to deal with it. Well... Prince's was a, a he he was doing that as a um like a revolt against a record company. Yeah, oh I know. Yeah. I know. I like, was just you know, saying people that Yeah. Cuz wasn't there um uh, god no, I don't I'm thinking of something else. Never mind. I was thinking there was another artist but it wasn't Yeah. That's not it was like I'm sorry. I'm thinking of Bruce Springsteen in the E Street Band. That's not totally different. It's just having that E Street Band with you. Never mind. Yeah, because he did yeah. a few albums without the E Street right. Band. Nothing about were... changing your name, though. Yeah. yeah. I saw E and went with it. Yeah. Damn it. Excuse me. But there, I was like, Bryce Dallas Howard. Uh, she deserves to yeah. be related to him. <laughs> right. But she, she is very talented. She And she's like... She's like an okay actress. <coughs> Speaking of Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, she's like, she's like an okay actress. No, I think she's fantastic. She's just okay. I love watching her. Like, I, I mean, I can't mock anybody because I can't act to save my life. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, it, <coughs> sure you can. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, like, she is an amazing director. Oh, what's she direct? She's directed episodes of The Mandalorian. Oh, really? Yeah. No shit. Yeah, like she had done some like short short films and stuff, and then Dave Filoni tapped her to be, at, with the Mandalorian, and the episodes of the Mandalorian she has directed all except for one of them. Have been like, out of the park. Like mm-hmm. I, this is amazing. It looks amazing. It, it you know the the choices she made was made. Like the only and like, I can't even blame her for the one that stinks. It was just she was given a bad story. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's like one episode of The Mandalorian where I'm just like, like me and Ian both are like, this was like the worst episode of The Mandalorian ever. Which one? It, oh, it, it's in the third season, and it, <coughs> it has Jack Black and Lizzo in it. And it is really fucking bad. No, I, I'm pretty sure I remember that one, yeah. Yeah, like it's a horrible. Yeah. Like, it also has Christopher Lloyd. <coughs> because I was like, Jack Black is in this? What the fuck? Yeah, I mean, it, like that threw me that he was in the Mandalorian. Yeah, it's, I mean, it says Christopher Lloyd, and it's just like that doesn't throw me as much for some reason. Right, but like it was like Christopher Lloyd was wasted. <laughs> oh my god, that, like, would, you be know, so, that like, would be so fucking funny. It's like, <laughs> like it, it, there are crimes you see me wasting Christopher Lloyd, 
is a crime. Like, you don't waste Christopher no, Lloyd. No, absolutely not. No. But it strikes me as funny that they did that because, I mean, it, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to laugh because it isn't funny, but it is. It reminds me of the Comic-Con where we met Darby Allen. Oh. He's out in the open with everybody, and you got Chevy Chase hidden away from yeah. the whole entire world, and you had to pay big bucks to see him. But here's Christopher Lloyd out there bitching about the hot dogs for lunch. <laughs> oh, what's for lunch today? We have hot dogs? <laughs> Doc needs a hot dog. <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny. Oh, yeah, he's uh-huh. a he's a fucking national treasure. I'm sorry. <laughs> I I I I think he's more of a national treasure than Chevy Chase, and I fucking love Chevy Chase. <laughs> you know, yeah, he was funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I you know I'm actually surprised he's still alive. How old is that man? Because he was old when I was young. He's in his eighties. I got. I got to look this up. I. I. He has to be in his nineties by now. I'm saying. I'm saying late seventies, early eighties. Okay. Let me see. I'm saying nineties. I don't care what you say. You early or late. Christopher Lloyd. Christopher. Stupid. This. Sometimes I don't like this thing. Okay. Here we go. I'm blaming your nails. It, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Gonna make me put the whole thing in. Damn it. Here we go, Christopher Lloyd. He was born in 1938. 2023. Well, 1938. Well, 1940 to 2060 years, so that's. He's 85. 85, okay. So we were both wrong. We were both wrong. Yeah. But. That's almost 90. Yeah. Like, so he was what, in his forties and fifties when he did Back to the Future? Yeah. God, he seemed like he was seventy. <laughs> wow. Like I don't ever remember seeing Christopher Lloyd young. No, you won't. I mean, like there was no picture. Like you see people like when the, you know like Bob Barker. The pictures of him young everywhere, like a handsome teenager when he was in college. No young pictures of Christopher Lloyd. I mean, think back, like, even like when he was on Taxi, he looked like. Oh my God. I forgot I mean, about Taxi. Like, <laughs> when he's Jim. Yeah, he looked. Da- oh. I, forgot I don't about know what taxi. I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Taxi. Oh my God. Is that on a streaming service? It might be. I don't know. Oh, I gotta look that up. There's a lot of looking things up there. <laughs> no, you think up tonight. Because I've never come across that, and that is. And oh wow, I forgot about that show. That Old show was stacked. Boy. Yeah, it was. It was, and it wasn't even that great. I mean, people thought that show was hysterical, and I would sit there and be like, "What is so funny about this?" Except for Christopher Lloyd, I always thought he was funny. Well, Andy, I don't like Judd Hirsch. Yeah, I should say that. I'm not because even when he did the what was it, Dear John, right? Yeah, I just didn't care. He's like he's dry. He's very dry, but. I don't mind the shows he's in. Right, he play, he, he has to play the straight man. Yeah. Like, like Taxi, he was the straight man. He, and Dear John, he was the straight right. man. Like, he, he can't he, he can't do the comedy. The comedy has to take place around him. Okay, and just to answer your question, it's on Paramount Plus. Oh, okay. Pluto TV. You can rent or buy it on Amazon if yeah. you want. And something called Freebie. Freebie, yeah. Freebie. But, I don't um, know why, but that reminds me of something that Wally would say. Yeah. Freebie. <laughs> it was Andy Kaufman, Tony Danza, Mary Lou Henner, yep. Danny DeVito, yep. Judd Hirsch. I mean, that mm-hmm. that that was a fucking. It not, is not Danny DeVito. Not not not. not yes, Danny DeVito was not, in yeah, Taxi. Not, no, not t- Tony. Tony Danza wasn't in it. Yes, he was. He was. Yes. Okay. Who's the boss? Tony Danza. Yes, he was. Both of them men were in Taxi. And then there was the third, it was the guy. And then the chick was Mary Lou. Mary Lou Henner. Mary Henner. Yeah, because yeah, I had a crush on her. Who did it? Yeah, well. And yeah. it was all because she was a fucking redhead. Yeah. You men and your redheads. They, they are. Fucking assholes. Witching. Anyway. Um. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay. Because there's so many <laughs> redheads that run through here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, I I was red for a while. Remember, you, you did you did go red. It yes. wasn't red though. It was like a burgundy mauve kind of thing going yeah. on there. But it was nice. It was a nice uh, deep color. But anyway, so I watched this show with Rob Lowe that was very good. 
Oh, shit, yeah, that's what we were talking about. Yeah. How do we get on a taxi ride? Ah, we went down a rabbit hole. We we waved our hands and said, taxi! Um. <laughs> but I, I like I like old shows like that. I know you do. Sometimes, though, when I'm watching them, I'm like, why was this so funny back then? you got to find that's why I was the so humor su- in it from back then. That's why I was so surprised you didn't like Moonlighting. And it wasn't because of Bruce Willis. I right. fucking adore him. I can't stand her. I get that. I love Mrs. Peabody or whatever her name is. And yeah. her boyfriend. The, yeah. Bugger. So, yeah, oh yeah. My, I love those two. And Bruce Willis was the bomb. Yeah. I just couldn't stand her. Yeah. Ugh. Even as a kid, I was like, she is terrible. What <laughs> else was she in? She was in something else. That everybody was like, oh, this is so great. And I'm like, no, it's not. And there's no Bruce Willis. No reason to watch. <laughs> I can't remember. Like, her career is like an odd one. Yeah. Something else to look up. Yeah, something else <laughs> to look up. This is going to be the co- co- called the podcast of looking um, things up. <laughs> let's look up old Sybil Shepherd. She had a show named Sybil. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, that was. She was also in that Don Johnson movie that I've been trying to get on DVD that is well, non-existent. I mean, she was in the Last Picture Show. She was in Taxi Driver. Taxi Driver. Oh yeah. yeah. Trying to, have to go backwards here because like, there was a lot of like one like after a while it's like like she did Sybil which ran for like three years and that was like ninety five to ninety eight okay but like everything else is like a TV movie or like a one shot where she was like a guest star like Moonlighting she did that horrible movie. Moonlighting oh my god that's what we started yeah. this conversation yeah <laughs> she was in that horrible movie Chances Are. Did I see that? Probably, yeah. I don't know. If she was in it, I might... It's like Joy it's, Roberts. I avoided it. I mean, she's it's got, in it. Again, killer cast. It's got Robert Downey Jr., Ryan o- O'Neill, and Mary Stuart Masterson. Oh, I like Mary Stuart Masterson. Yeah. Not too big on Ryan O'Neill, though. Yeah, like it was like Wasn't this... Wasn't he married to somebody that we... we no, never mind. Who was Ryan O'Neill married to? Yeah, I, I think it was like one of those deals where like Robert Downey Jr. was like a reincarnation of her husband. Oh my god! Yeah, it, it was like an it was an odd fucking movie. It was like, but she did an episode of Fantasy Island. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! There we go. Why are they supposed to be um bringing yeah. that back? Well, I mean, they did it. They they, they did. They brought back Fantasy Island once, and then, like, it ran for a couple seasons, like, it's a CW show or some shit. Oh, that would yeah. be awful. Yeah. That's, yeah. Mm. And then... There's, it is, like, and people are going to disagree with me on this, but CW is hit or miss with their shows. Yeah. And it's usually miss. Yeah. And I hate saying that, because Supernatural... Right. That was a hit, you know. Um, there was one other one. Vampire Diaries was a hit. I just cannot get into, like, Pretty Little Liars and shit. I yeah. can't get into that shit. And, and Vampire Diaries only held my attention for so long because it was supernatural, even though I had to hang on to supernatural. It was, like, repetitious. The, the funny thing is, like, with most CW shows, they do become repetitious. And they all kind of revolve around, like... Like, all those superhero shows they did with DC, it was always the same shit. It's like, everybody had a team around them, and, you know, the main character was always keeping secrets from the team that later on became exposed, and, oh, you're keeping secrets from us again. No more secrets, Barry. No more secrets, Oliver. You know, it was all, and, you know, like, it was always, like, some sort of horse shit, that like, like those those shows like they, they figured out finally like a formula of like were, were you watching Pretty Little Liars because that's basically Pretty it, Little Liars but that's what the thing was they, they, and they Gossip were, Girl they were <laughs> they were they, they ended up falling into the CW formula right right 
and it wasn't until like they kind of figured out like a 22 episode run is too long for a superhero show. Well, well so is 20 seasons. Right. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? And they started like doing like mini seasons with like long with like shorter arcs, but then there was like an overarching arc. like it was it they they figured it out a little bit, but it was, it never like at least like with Smallville. Right. Like they had it right for a while. Yeah, I forgot about Smallville. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was when they started bringing, and you're going to hate me when I say this, but when they started bringing in the Hawk people and all that, I, what was that whole team that was supposed to be coming together? The, they, they were doing a Justice League thing, did, yeah. yeah it, was awful. A yeah League, it was yeah. awful. Yeah, it was awful. It was awful. They did, they, you know, Hawkman was from the remnants of the Justice Society, and there were, like, all sorts of, like, little Easter eggs. Like, yeah, you know, that, that was cool. But, like, you, you and I have always agreed, like, that show takes a downward turn once Michael Rosenbaum leaves his Lex. Uh, right, right, right. You're well, not wrong. Yeah, you know, like, the relationship between Clark and Lex was so <coughs> fucking good on that show. Yeah. And when he, he, yeah. he left the show, like, it struggled for the next three seasons. Yeah. Like, there was some cool stuff, but he, overall... He was missed. He yeah. was, I mean, he was missed. Yeah. And, but, the whole thing was... You were so invested, you had to see it end. Yeah. You had to. It wasn't like Lost that ran for five seasons, or five or six seasons. This was a long-running fucking show that yeah. you're like, I have to see this to the end. I have to see him become Superman. Yeah, that was the whole. That became the whole thing. Like, when is he going to get the, the tights? Yeah. When is and he going to fly? And it was the very end. Yeah. The, the very, very, very fucking end. Yeah. Like, they made you fucking... And I honestly believe they didn't do it earlier because they would have been like, all right, we're done. Because they knew how... Mm. That was the rule. The one rule that they actually had was no flight, no tights. Right, right, right. Like, right. They, they said that from the very beginning. But he did fly. Off and on. Yeah. Like, but he didn't, like... like he it, didn't know how to use his powers. Right. Like, it wasn't until the very end, like, the last episode that it's like, okay, everything clicked and now here's the suit. Uh, yeah. You right. know what I mean? Like, you know, it's just like, fuck. Yeah. But you it know. was everything. And I know you were anxious to see that, but it felt like you were a little disappointed with it. Because it, it's that thing of like, the guy who played Clark played him really well. I, I agree. I agree. Tom, Tom Welling. Tom Welling, yeah. yeah. And I didn't want to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Tom Welling. Yeah, Tom Welling. And he, like, so, like, it became that thing of, like, I would have liked to have just seen a season of him as Superman. Yeah, but they waited to the last minute of the last episode of yeah. the last season, and it's like... It was, like, the last ten minutes yeah, of the last episode of the last season. Yeah, and you were like, what the fuck? Season. That's all I get? Yeah. I watched this show through the whole... Well, I mean, I did it with you. I picked it up in, like, the third season, I yeah. think, because I was like, this actually looks good, what you're watching, even though I fucking hate it, Superman. But you stuck it through that whole entire time, and that's all they gave you. Yeah, like bastards. Like that. That's that. And and you knew it. Like I knew it, but it it was still like, man, I would just like to have seen a season of him in the suit. And right. I, and I know they've done comic books, and you know, and even like in like the the Arrowverse, they addressed it with one of the crossover episodes because they were jumping through dimensions, and they come across. The Tom Welling soup, like Clark Kent, and you know he tells right. him like I'm no longer Superman. I, right. gave, I gave up my powers so I could live a normal life. Right, exactly. And Lex Luthor was like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Like, and that was um, right. um John Cryer as Lex. That's why I like fell in love with John Cryer as Lex Luthor. I'm like, <laughs> I don't "Fuck, know. you're good," because he's like, "You, you are a god. Why would you do that?" Like, I want to have kids. <laughs> yeah. He's like, what? <laughs> you yeah. Know? But yeah, so like. But, like, Tom Welling was so good as Clark. Yes. But I just wanted to have, not only me, but I wanted him to be rewarded with a year in the suit. Right, right, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's what I really like not wanted. Not only that, he went, he did this. You know? Yeah. He made us believe. Yeah. He was. He was a very, it's just the guy I see now just is not him. Like, you see how he's aged. I look at him and I look at, it's not the same person to me. He looks so different for me for some reason I don't know why who Tom Welling yeah well, he's aged I mean he's I don't know but you know he's like 40 something 
Michael Rosenbaum looks the same. He does. <laughs> he looks exactly like, he, the he, fucking he's same. He's like a fucking vampire. <laughs> he's like fucking Jared Leto was there for a while. Like, yeah. Jared Leto never fucking aged for a while. And that's Michael Rosenbaum. Like, yeah. like where are you going to age, dude? <laughs> he's got the same fucking hair, dude, the same color, the same facial structure. No, nothing has changed on that man. And he's so cool, too. Like, have you yeah. ever watched his podcast? I listened to one of them. Like, he's like such like a... Sorry, she startled me. I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> He's like such a laid back guy. Is he? Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, well, on that, yeah, you yeah. can tell. And he's very good to his fans. Yeah. Like, I mean, he's like, yeah, I said, fuck it. I don't need to act anymore unless I really want to. And, you know. I mean, it's Michael Rosenbaum. Yeah. And it, and you don't want to say, oh, it's Michael Rosenbaum because people are like, big fucking deal. But he is a big fucking deal. I'm sorry. In our world, he's a big fucking deal. He is, yeah. And I mean, like, I feel like, like, you know, I mean, I'm sure he made decent money, like, doing, like, he was in um, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and Oh, my three. God, I just thought of something. Huh. I said Michael Rosebaum and Jared Leto, they were both in Urban Legends together. Yeah, there totally you go. I only forgot that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, he's the one that got his dog in the microwave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was so heartbroken over that fucking poodle. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I don't... I don't encourage that. I'm sorry. I don't, what is that word? Condone. I don't condone, condone yeah. that. Take that back. I don't even own a microwave. Just so yeah. you know. Yeah, we don't own a microwave. We do not. But, uh, like, yeah, I mean, like, I'm sure he makes, like, a good living. Like, you know, he's on the the con circuit constantly. Yes. Yes. And if you remember when we used to be able to watch that stuff on that game TV or whatever it was with that chick that was in the X-Men that used to host it. Yeah. She, the, he would be... W- all the time, coming up to her, talking to her, being her co-host, shit like yeah. that, if you recall. It was always Michael Rosemont. Yeah. Because I was like, dude, I watch this all the time if he was doing this. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, I mean, he, he does, like, he does his thing, but still, it's like that thing of just, like, he just seems like, like he's got it figured out finally. Like, I, I'm happy for him. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Yeah, I'm happy I for him. Because, I mean, he was good in Urban Legends, all that, but he, he did some other corny stuff, didn't he? Oh, he did that one comedy where... They got thrown out of the fraternity, so they, they dressed as girls and were in a sorority house. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, I can't remember that. Because every time I think of that, I think of white chicks. Yeah, but I mean, it was like in that, it, yeah, like, yeah. you know, that bosom buddy, buddies kind of vein where they, you know, they learn to be better people afterwards and, and shit. Like he, like, he did stuff like that. Yeah. What are you looking at? I'm just looking around. But, uh, but yeah, so he, he's a dude, that's for sure. He is, he's a dude. Yeah. And I love his interview style. Like, that's why I like his podcast. Like, I, I, I when I see somebody I want to, I want to learn something about, like, I watch that, because, like, he gets some, it, it's not an interview, it's a conversation. Right. You know? Right. I mean, he, he's posting questions, and he, but, like, like, the, the, the person usually asks them back, and he answers them. He's like, well, well, don't you do this? And what was it like for you? And, you know, he, he, he talks about his past and his demons and everything that he went through. And, you know, so, but but it's a conversation, but you learn, like, I know he's had on, um, oh, that guy that you like a lot. Um, the guy who was in the wheelchair and mom. Oh, William Fickner. William Fickner. Him talking about, like, doing, like, uh, um, oh, God, my, my mind is just blank. He was in that movie, uh, the one that had uh, Al Pacino and uh, Robert De Niro, Val Kilmer. Heat? Heat, yeah. He was talking about, like, doing Heat. Yeah, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Like, hearing, like, the stories from Heat, it was just like, yeah. oh, shit. I yeah, mean, like, Stuff like that, like, like, and that's something like most people probably wouldn't have asked him about. You want to ask him about like the big things that he, you know, that he has done. And he wasn't like a big thing in Heat, but he was in Heat, like one of the greatest movies ever made. Right, right. You know exactly. And he's like, oh man, shit, I could talk about that story. <laughs> like, wow. All right. But um, I also watched a documentary uh, this week on about Kurt Angle. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think I remember you mentioning, um, 
something about Kurt Angle having a special come out, and you yeah. were interested in watching it. Yeah. But what was really inter- I was like, why? <laughs> but what was really interesting about it was like it was a WWE production. So immediately I'm thinking, well, this is going to be all about WWE. Right. And it wasn't. Like, was it his old, well, old medals and shit like that? Well, it was about like they like him him his amateur like the first half of it is his amateur wrestling career. Right. right up until he went to the gold medal. Okay. It's about Fox Catcher. Uh, yes, I remember that, but I never watched it. But I always did because of Steve Carell. Yeah, um, you know his relationship with with Dave Schultz, who 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 uh, Dupont shot and killed, um, like all all that stuff, like you know, and which like I was like surprised by because it's like, like this is an hour and forty two minutes, and we've been on this for about forty five. Like, yeah, I'm, you know. This isn't a normal WWE documentary. No. And then the second half of it, like when he 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 goes to the WWE, like they talk about it, but it's more about his injuries and his addiction to pain pain pills. Right. Yeah. It wasn't like, like they weren't like talking about, like, oh, Kurt Angle did this and Kurt Angle did yeah, that. Yeah. He and, pinned this guy. And he pinned yeah. that. No. It, I mean, like it was like they they talked to Stone Cold. They talked to The Rock, and they were both you know a couple other people. Who were like you know talking about like you know it was amazing how quickly he picked it up and he figured things out and stuff like that, but like he talked about like you know he broke his neck three more times while he was in WWE, mm-hmm. you know and his addiction to painkillers and like like it talked about the rap like the the dark rabbit hole he went down, right like it wasn't about it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows right. no, like not at this all. was a very interesting documentary from the yeah. standpoint of it wasn't like a a typical WWE yeah. thing. It, it it was like the dark like it was like you know, Kurt Angle like atoning for his sins in a lot of ways. Atoning? Yeah. Well see here's my like I'm not a huge Kurt Angle fan. I, I respect the dude. Yeah. Like hey, you went out there, you got your gold medals, you're in the WWE, you you know you've been with McMahon. <laughs> Anybody gets a fucking medal for dealing with that man. But anyways I'm wondering if, like, was it him getting into the WWE that I was like, ah, all of a sudden he was just not my hero anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if that was the reason why or if it was just, I just didn't see it. Like, great, he won a gold medal. You know, a lot of people have. And I get it, he's from here. But I just didn't see what other people saw in him that he made him that great. It was his ability to do two things. Okay. Number one was the way he could work a crowd. Like, like when he first came into WWE, he was playing the this naive, all-American boy. And, you know, like with the milk and, you know, all, all that type of stuff. Yeah. Like the three eyes, you know. Right. And... Like, it, like, it was like, it would take a, it would take a lot, like, you have to swallow your ego to like do that in front of people, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. But then there was the other side of him that was like a stone cold killer, like the, the, the absolute badass that he really was, right? And when he he was able to go to that, and plus you throw in like. Again, like it's that thing of like, what what takes people years to master. He did in months, and mm-hmm. like you can't put on there aren't there aren't many bad Kurt Angle matches. Right. Like when you watch a Kurt Angle match, you are watching. Like, you would think this was somebody who was at it for fifteen years at the time. Like he was only mm-hmm. at it for one. Right. You know, like he was just that good, that smooth in the ring, mm-hmm. and. Like understanding, like, because like any other athlete, to like, because you look at like other combat athletes that have transitioned to wrestling, for the most part, mm-hmm. they struggle because they don't know how to work a crowd. They don't know the psychology. Right. Like to them, it's how quickly can I win a match? How right. how do I you know? They don't understand the psychology of how a professional wrestling match works. Right. And they struggle with that. And also, like, so often, especially like when you watch, like, uh, 
an MMA fighter. Like, they don't understand how to pull the punch. Right. Or how to make it look real yeah. without it being real. Right. And you see a lot of times, like, they, 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 their, their punches look fake. Yeah, they and do. you're just like, how do you not know how to do... Right. Like, this should be simple or like, to you. Or, like, when they do the thing with the face slam, it is so obvious that... Yeah. They're doing this in their head. It could be better. They, 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 they struggle with the theatrics. Yes. I... Not the choreography, just the theatrics. The actress, yeah. yeah. And that's why the majority of them, like, wash out. Like, you look at, like, I mean, there have been, like, there are two, like, um, Ken Shamrock figured it out. Like, he, he could have good matches. It was just he had the personality of dry paint. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen his entrance to the ring a couple of times. Yeah. I mean, it, it just doesn't... Mm. Like, they, they, they had... It's um, mediocre at best. Like, Blackman, he, he was, like, you know, again, a complete and total badass. Couldn't get over whatsoever. Um, Tank Abbott was in WCW. He was fucking awful. Um, like, it's not until you get later on, like, Ronda Rousey kind of figured it out. But still, she wasn't, like, great in the ring. No, she was a MMA fighter. Yeah, and then um, uh, Van, I can't think of her name. She was in AEW for a little bit. She was with Dan Lambert and his crew. I didn't watch AEW for a while. You remember? Yeah, right. But um, like there was this one girl. Like you could just tell. Like she was being trained. But she looked awful in the ring. Like again, like it just couldn't figure out like how to throw a punch or an elbow or whatever. Oh, like I mean, it was bad. Was great, you know. <coughs> so like, so it looked fake. And, yeah, and it's hard for the viewer to be like, if it doesn't look real. Yeah, but Kurt figured it out. Yeah, like quickly. Yeah, like Brock Lesnar, same thing. He figured it out quickly. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. So, like, th- there are guys who have figured that out over right. the years. And, like, you, it's kind of like you have to, like, let your ego go and s- admit to yourself, I know nothing. Right. Because you don't. Yeah. But the, a lot of these people, I feel like they, it's probably not the case. They probably come in with a big ego. Like, right. I'm I'm so-and-so. I. You know. Oh, I, I can only imagine the men do that. Like, I'm better than all you chumps right. that have been doing this for years and years. Yeah. You know, with just so many other professions that happens other than wrestling. But right. I see that all the time on reality shows. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to these professionals but for help, and I'm better than you? No, right. you know nothing. I mean, for Kurt, for Kurt Angle to, to, to walk around wearing a tiny cowboy hat on his head for an entire <laughs> episode of Raw. A tiny cowboy Like, he did. He had this little, like, Steve Austin, like, I was hung over one day. I'm walking through an airport, and I saw this tiny cowboy hat, and I thought, that'll look great on Kurt. And Kurt was like, yeah, I'll wear it. <laughs> and, I mean, that, that's, yeah. like, you're a legitimate badass. Yeah. And here you are wearing this tiny cowboy hat. Right. Looking like a goof. Acting like a goof. Like. All for the show. Yeah. And, I mean, that's, that's somebody who can swallow their ego to do what it takes to. To get it done. How much do you think Kurt Angle is worth with gold medals and all? I'm willing to bet he's probably not worth that much. WWE is on the pay well? Well, I... I mean, when you when you, when you look at how much he was probably spending on painkillers at the time, um, before he got straight, like... I mean, I know he's like, right now he's on like a Legends contract with WWE... Which means, like, he makes appearances now and again. Um, like, any anytime they're in Pittsburgh, I think he, he shows up and, you know, comes out and, and gives the crowd a wave. Um, I, I think, like, he, you know, he, he, he appears in, like, their, their video game. Stuff like that. Uh, like, you mean doing the voice of the video game? or No, like, like you get a likeness fee. For being in the WWE oh. video game, so like when you like so like any wrestler that appears in the game, that. yeah, like they get a, they get a likeness fee for that. Um, God damn, they don't even have to contribute anything and they get paid. Well, I mean, it's 
I need a job like that. <laughs> but it, it's that thing, though, of, of... And this is like... It comes from uh, a ruling about the NCAA. Like, for years, the NCAA was marketing... A video, a basketball and a, a a football video game. I'm playing. I'm playing NCAA 10 right now on, on my PlayStation 3. Oh, okay. Okay, and there was a ruling about like because because when you're an NCAA player, like you cannot make any money off of yourself, or it used to be that way. I okay. should say, like you could not make any money off of yourself whatsoever. So when you were when they made these video games. Like, they were creating, like, so you had, like, number 32 playing for Pitt, and he, he, he you couldn't put, like, their name, their act, like, you couldn't put, like, is he as a band of candle right. on, in the game, right? but he would be number 32. Right. You know, but he was clearly, yeah. is he a band of candle? Right. And he was getting nothing for that. Oh. And there was a guy who sued the NCAA, a basketball player. Because he's like clearly, like even like because he he was like even like if you look at the game, he looks like me, right? In the game, but I am he's wearing my number. The statistics are basically based upon my performance, and I have made no money off of this. Oh. Uh. And they won the case. And so, EA shut down like the NCAA shut down the video games, uh, because. They would have had to pay the players, right? Yes, yes. And so they couldn't do that, <laughs> or they didn't want to do that, so they shut it down. And that later on led to the name, image, and likeness um, ruling, where players can make money off of themselves. It's you know, so like now, a pit player can like sign a contract to like be in a commercial. Yeah, you know. He can't, re- he can't. He can't represent Pitt. He can't be on there with a Pitt jersey or a Pitt. Right. But, but he can appear in a commercial. Right. Yeah. Like they, he can sell a T-shirt with his name on it. Right. Now. Um, stuff like that. Like that's what they, they're able to do. So, I, I got a question for you. Speaking of names on jerseys and stuff, what is the reason Notre Dame doesn't put name on their jerseys again? Tradition. All right. Continue what you were talking about. I just I forgot to ask you that. I had that in the back of my head like months ago. Yeah, there are a few schools that do that. Penn State doesn't put names on jerseys either. Well, I was going through my closet, and I come across the Samarja jersey, right. and I but, was like, Yeah, why don't they have names on their jerseys again? Well, here's the thing with the Samarja jersey, though. Okay, that was bought at a time that again you couldn't make money off of your name, image, or likeness. And so, like, even, like, I have Pitt jerseys. I have, I have a number one jersey from when Larry Fitzgerald played at Pitt. It does not say Fitzgerald on the back of it because he couldn't. It wasn't allowed to. You couldn't sell a jersey with a player's name on the back of it. Is that at the same time they weren't allowed to give autographs? Unless yeah. Unless they got paid? Well, they, they couldn't get paid. I meant, yeah. Yeah. So no autographs. Yeah. All right. What's the <coughs> what's the pit jersey I have that your mom bought me that one year for Christmas? I think that's a Tyler Palco jersey. No, I, I think you got me the Tyler Palco jersey. I think I got you a Tyler Palco jersey, but I think my mom bought you one too. Or does it just say Pittsburgh? On I think the it back? just. I think I think you're, the one you're talking about it the just says pit, pit, but it does have a number three on it. But I do have a Palco jersey. Yes, I, the, I did buy you. It was a, a throwback jersey to 1976. Yes, yes. I was just going to say it's a throwback. With a number three on it, yeah. Yeah, I have that. I yeah. have a couple pit jerseys. Yeah. Yeah. But I have some Arjas. Yeah. Jowls. <laughs> yeah. Well, Pete, Brian Jowls. I know baseball. baseball I know. Right. Uh, football would be Mr. Reed, Mr. Reed. You, you have Reed <laughs> and you have Fanica. Fanica, yeah. yeah. You know who I need? Barasso. But I know, I know the hoodie, I want a jersey. Yeah. And also a Jaguars one. I don't give a shit who's on it. <laughs> I just want a Jags one jersey. I want that <laughs> on my arm. But they don't have that anymore. I don't care. I want one that did have one. Oh, jeez. That's a hard thing to do. Oh, jeez. Jacksonville's changed. Like, the- yeah, I don't know what other jerseys. I just know them ones because those are my favorites. But that's the problem. Like, there was a time period where even I will freely admit that Jacksonville Jaguars had a smooth-looking uniform. 
like yes. like the late '90s, early 2000s, with with the Jaguar on the sleeve, the teal jersey, the white pants with the sli- stripes down the side. They had a smooth looking looking uniform, and then yeah. they started changing the uniform every five years, and like I'm just like go just go back to the OGs. Because you, you, you hit it on the head the first time. That what you've been doing. Like, they had that one. They, they had a, 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 a five year period where they had that, those goofy looking two tone helmets. Oh my God. I knew you were going to say it. I was like, he's going through the helmets. <laughs> oh my God. You have no idea the torture I went through for two fucking years over these goddamn helmets. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, it's a color. Let it go, man. It, it's just the goofiest looking. <laughs> it look doesn't affect how they play football. Hey, ask Dion. It does. <laughs> I was gonna say you know someone that know does say that. Yeah, it, look, look good, play good, play good, pay good. <laughs> oh, I mean, my <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but <clears throat> after I said it, I'm like, he's gonna say yes to yeah. someone. Yeah, oh, but no, yeah. I remember those two years very clearly because yeah. we lived in that apartment, and it was very hard to not hear you during football season. Fuck, I hated living there during football season because it was so small. Yeah. I could carry you right through the fucking wall. It was uh. so thin. I'd be like, oh my God, these football games last too long. But you know what's really weird is when we were at the games, I wish they were longer. Why is that? Because it's fun being there. No, it wasn't fun with you and Frank that one time. It oh. absolutely was not. Me and oh. Lindsay was not liking that game. <laughs> We oh. had no fun that day with you two. I wish you could remember what game that was. We were we were on fire that game. Yeah. Oh, that poor guy. I bet you he still has nightmares about you. I was Cincinnati. That was a Cincinnati game, I think. I don't or, remember. Or was it South Florida? I can't remember. I, I, no, I, that, I mean that that funny. one guy. Like, he came on. He was crying because of me. Me and he was. He, he, me and Frank had that guy in tears. <laughs> That was the best. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I remember that guy. Cause he was like, he would look over his shoulder and he'd be like, mm. he was actually wiping his eyes at one time, but I don't know if it was because he was crying. <laughs> no, there was a point like his teammates had to console him. Yeah, they had his arms around him. Yeah. Like, because, <laughs> I mean, LaShawn McCoy, like, he was the last line of defense and LaShawn McCoy made him look so stupid in the open field. And went for like an 80-yard touchdown run. And like that guy came off the field, and we were just like, your team's going to lose, and it's all your fault. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was just... Yeah, he, you put the pressure on him. Oh. what you did. Yeah. You put pressure on that boy that I don't think his coach put on him. <laughs> I'll tell you, you guys, you and Frank both were just obnoxious to go to games with. I'm just, I have no other word but that. And I get it. Believe me, I get get into it. Because, I mean, when I go to concerts, I get into that shit. Like, not at first. It takes me a couple yeah. minutes. But then I get, like, I mean, Duran Duran, I was screaming my fucking head off. Like, you can hear it, you know? And Joy Wave and all that, you know? But uh, it was just annoying. It was obnoxious. But I was okay you were aiming it at them, not, you know, me or the pit players. Well, like the the, the, the Notre Dame game? Yeah, what was about that, man? Why are you oh. going to be on Notre Dame all the time? You're fucking Irish. It doesn't you mean are anything. fucking Irish. How can you be against Notre fuck, Dame? Fuck Notre Dame. You are Irish. Fuck them. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but that that Notre Dame game with, with Brady Quinn and, and, and Samarja... <laughs> And you were just like, at one point you said the dumbest fucking thing that you could possibly say at that time. Because it was like, and that's a seven yard reception by number 83, Jeff Samarja. And you said, wow, they really should cover that guy, shouldn't they? (laughs) And I'm just stewing because Pitt's getting their asses handed to him. I also said to you, because he's like the Michael Jordan... A football. He was snagging them balls left and right out of air. And you, you're just like, yeah. They, like they, the ball was gone, he just appear and snag it. And you were like, damn. Like, and you're just like, don't they cover that guy? <laughs> yeah, oh, they f- weren't. 
Shut the fuck up. They absolutely weren't. Oh, I wanted to strangle you right at that moment. Like, y- you wanted to go down on the field and say, hey, even the woman up in there is noticing, maybe yeah. you should cover that guy. <laughs> there was a time I went to a West, it was a West, Pitt, West Virginia game. And it was, um, it was when uh, Steve, Steve Slayton and Pat White were there. And for people who know college football, when, like, when West Virginia had, Steve Slayton and Pat White, like they, they were amazing. They were, but it was like they just kept running the same fucking play just to a different side of the field. Uh-huh. And I'm I'm sitting next to Denny. Denny Denny was the guy I had tickets with, and I'm sitting next to Denny, and we're watching this game, and I'm just like, power sweep right, and they'd run a power sweep right. Oh my like, god! Power sweep left, and they'd run a power sweep left, uh-huh. and I'm like power sweep left again, and they'd run another power sweep left again, and you know, and this one will go in for a touchdown. Power sweep right, power sweep right goes in for a touchdown, and Denny's just like <laughs> laughing his ass off at me. <laughs> I'm just calling the plays out to the defense. Wow. I, I got a point where I was yelling to the plays to the defense to, to the defense. I'm like, wow. it's a power sweep right, and they're just like, you know. Tripping over themselves. Right, and I'm just yeah. like, like, it can't be this fucking hard. <laughs> you know? Like, how did they not be able to do this yeah. if I can do it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, and Denny was just in tears as I, like, called, like, ten straight plays in a row correct. Like, Oh, just, yeah, like, I can it, imagine you know. laughing, yeah. You know, like, De- just Denny, what the, I haven't heard that name in freaking years. Yeah. Where's he been? Oh, he, he does his thing. Very beanie. With these two, look at these two. Going I know. crazy. This is not usual since Sylvester has been here. No. Ooh. Yes, hello, Who hit the table? Sabine did. Is she okay? Yeah, she's fine. She's biting hit, me right now. Hit her noggin. <laughs> she's got a hard head. Poor kitty. Yeah, she does. Darby, he needs a bath before winter hits. Okay, well. I have to use his new little kitty hoodie. Oh, jeez, yeah. His little panda bear kitty hoodie I yeah. bought him. Oh, he's going to look adorable. I'm going to... Post pictures online everywhere. I'm going to enter them in contests. <laughs> well, since we're talking a little bit of sports. Okay. Um, this week, worlds collided. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, and what sport are we speaking of? In the NFL. Oh, gosh. I haven't been paying attention to none of that. Well, that's fine. But... I know they were playing some at... Well, both jobs today. <laughs> it was in the break room at one yeah. job, and then it was in the mm, hall at the other yeah. job. Yeah, so, um, but honestly, I cannot tell you who was playing. Right. But well, this was college football day yeah, today. Okay, yeah. it's not Sunday. Go ahead. So, last Sunday. Well, okay. So, apparently, I don't know when this took place, but Travis Kelsey's plays tight end for the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay. Okay. And apparently, he went to go see Taylor Swift when she was in Kansas City. Ooh. He's of that age. He's, like, in his early 30s. Like, you know, I get it. And apparently, he wanted to meet her and give her a friendship bracelet with his phone number on it. What? Yeah, he was trying. He was shooting a shot. Who, who is this now? Travis Kelsey. Who is this again? He's a tight end for the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs. Yes. He's probably the best tight end in the NFL. He is. Like, he's, he's that good. Anyway, apparently he couldn't see her. Like, she doesn't see people before or after a concert to save her throat or some, some poor shit. So, apparently he, he sent a tweet out saying, hey. So, here's the interesting aspect of this. Like, I can give a shit less. Like, people are like. Are they together? Is this a thing? Are, are is this a, a romance? Is is this Taylor's new man? Oh my you know, god! And NFL <laughs> oh people god. are like, it's like, tra- oh, can't wait to hear this song about football. <laughs> yeah, like you know, I mean, that, that, that's like, like well, this is where this is gone. And like NFL people are, are like, you know, like, uh, you know, are, are they fucking? You know, like I, I can give a shit less. But this is what I find interesting. Okay, these are these are actual numbers. 24 hours after Taylor Swift showed up at a Kansas City Chiefs game to root for Travis Kelsey. Oh, jeez. 
400% spike in Travis Kelsey jersey sales oh in 24 hours. Oh my god. Travis Kelsey's podcast now ranks number one on Apple. Kelsey added 383,000 Instagram followers in 24 hours. What? 24.3 million viewers watched this game. Oh my god. God. It was a 63% jump in female viewers 18 to 49. A 3% increase in Chiefs search, or three times an increase in Chiefs searches on the web. A three times increase in Chiefs sales on StubHub. And the Chiefs sold more tickets in a single day since the start of the season. Wow. All because she showed up at a football game. To root for a player. And, and you can't see it, but I am rolling my eyes like a thousand fucking times. Like, I, I can't, I just don't like her. Well, I don't care for her either. I can give a shit less about her. Okay? Like, but it's that thing of like the amazing. The influence. The influence. Exactly. The influence. It's the influence. It's the same thing as, what was that? Fire, Fire Island, Fire Festival. Fire, Fire Festival. Fest, yeah. Which, by the way, it they're was, doing a second. I heard, and I can't wait to see this shit. Yeah. I, I can't wait for that documentary. But, because uh, <laughs> I'm obsessed with it. Like, if I see something, it's the same thing with Waco, because Waco has, like, so many documentaries on it now. But, no, the Fire Festival, there's so many, I cannot not watch it. Yeah. But it's the same thing. The, the influence that those models had for nothing. Right, right. And I don't get, I don't get this influence. I don't. I, first of all, I. I don't think she's talented. I really don't. She might have a good voice, but I don't think she's talented. I think she's a piece of well, shit. Uh, okay, I mean, that, that aside, I'm not going to talk about her talent. I'm not going to talk about any of that stuff. Her influence. I'm talking about the influence yes. of shit. Like, the fact that, like, these 18, 19, 20-somethings were rushing to buy Travis Kelsey jerseys. Yes. Based, I mean... That's what's amazing to me. That's why I think she's a piece of shit. Why? Like, I mean, like again, like I mean, I don't care if she's a piece of shit or not. It, 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 it's like she didn't tell them to. No, but I get that. I get that. Maybe I should take that back. I should take that back. That wasn't right. I just don't understand why people are so brainwashed to do that shit. Well, but. I can honestly say, in another sense, I am too. Because I'm influenced by the people I like. So I take back that she's a piece of shit because that's just people that are influenced by her, just like the Kardashians and everybody else. They are so brainwashed by that. It, it's brainwashing, I'm telling you. Because we all have it. Right. But Anything uh, Jared Leto, I'm, I'm jumping on board. You know what I mean? Like, I'm... He brainwashed me. Right, but <laughs> you're, you're also not rushing out to buy, like, Calvin Klein, you know, cologne. No, 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 no. I, I don't go that deep into it. But I'm saying there's a level of it. I, maybe brainwashing isn't the word I'm looking for. Just influence, I guess. Right. Go back to influence. Like, I, like, I, I mean, I always discuss it. Like, I, I can't think of anything. But like, here's the thing. Okay, so let, let's look at it this way. Okay, Jared Leto. Say he goes to an AEW show because of Britt Baker. Okay. That would not make me run out and make buy a Britt Baker t-shirt. It no, wouldn't. I, no, me neither. So what's the level of influence do you have from other people? You know what I mean? Right. Like. Are, are you that desperate to be that person that you go out and do exactly, you know what I mean? Right. What that was meant. To, and she didn't, I know, I get it. She didn't say go out and buy his jersey. But by that happening, that's what, you know, by that event, that's what happened, the, the result of it. Right. Right. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a cause and effect because right. she showed up at the game. Right. She influenced, like her influence was enough that right. these people went out and bought a jersey for somebody yeah. they probably don't even know who he is. Right, and that's my point. Would you go out and buy a Britt Baker t-shirt just because Jared Leto showed up at a game with it, held up a sign that said Britt Baker? Right. No. 
you absolutely. I wouldn't. Right. No, I, I agree. Like I agree with that. If I didn't, I should say. I I should also say if I don't watch AEW and didn't know who Britt Baker was, right. I should say that because I obviously know who she is. But I'm saying as an example, if you twist it around to us, what right. we are influenced by. Right. But at the same time, like you were, you've been influenced to dabble in the vegan lifestyle. Yes, I have it. And part of that is because of Jared Leto. A big part of that is because Jared right. Leto. Right. Because I follow him and I I follow his life stories because he right. puts it all out there and dude's healthier as fuck, you know, he's doing something right and I I I like it. Right. But at the same time not the full reason I do. No, it's it's not, but you were influenced by that. Yes, like he you was, you freely admitted like because he's vegan and this is the stuff he talks about. He's you a were very willing, strict vegan, right? Too. You were willing to give it a try. Yes, there's just certain things I won't do. The flip side of that is, Kevin Smith is also a vegan though, has been for a few years. Wow, la di da. But you, but you know, like he's somebody I, yeah, I admire. I know, I know. I have not thought about trying a vegan lifestyle. You know, he does not have that influence on me. Right. Like, I'll go see his movies. Okay. I'll, I'll buy some merch. All right. That's my level. I, I can't believe he's vegan now, but whatever. Um, I mean, that's cool. He changed his life around. Good for Kevin Smith. Right. I shouldn't put him down. He, he did it. He did it. He set a goal and he achieved it. Good for him. I'm still working on it. Maybe I'm a little <laughs> jealous. <laughs> like, he went vegan, achieved his goal. I went vegan, and here I am, still fat. <laughs> you know, it's like, what happened? Well, I mean, you know, he also had a heart attack. Yeah, there's that. Yeah, Before, yeah. I, I mean, I'm that, sorry, him. That that, that helped, in, yeah. and his daughter was vegan, and she yeah. kind of influenced it. And yeah. well, she led him to a healthier lifestyle. That's yeah. all that matters. So he'll be around a lot longer for her. Right. That's the goal. Right. And he achieved that. Right, but at the same time, like, like I'm not like going like, wow, no. Kevin Smith could go vegan, vegan so good. yeah, and like, I could lose all that weight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like it, it's just, you know. So, but there are other things that we're not influenced by. Like, so what? So he, so Jared Leto influenced me to be healthier. I mean, that that's it. No, that's I, basically the sum of it. Right, I understand that, but I'm I'm just saying. Too bad he doesn't know that, huh? Right, but at the same time, there are those people who like you know, pay thousands of dollars to go to that island in the Mediterranean and live with him for a week as he walks around looking like fucking Jesus. Uh, no, I would not do that. Yeah, I mean, but there are people who do but, that. Uh, even if I could afford it, I should say. Even if I could afford that, I wouldn't do that. The no. Jared Leto is not somebody I want to meet. No. He, he scares the shit out of me. Yeah, he's a very scary person. Very scary person. Now, his brother Shannon, on the other hand, I'd shake that man's hand all day long. But Jared, he has a twisted fucking mind, like, man, and yeah. I do not want to see that in person. No. <laughs> no, like he, he honestly probably thinks he is a god at this point. Oh, I uh, well, no. I, yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> I'm talking about, like, the video Hurricane. Yeah. I'm like, no. I don't need to delve deeper into that hole. No. no. He, mm. he has other bitches for that. Yeah. For, well, for all of you, Cummins is a fucked up person. <laughs> he absolutely is. Yeah. He is. And do you remember that? Like, when it was like, everybody was like, who is Bartholomew Cummins? Like, it was during People Crazy. And I'm like, it's Jared Leto. Yeah. Like, how is it not obvious this man is yeah. Bartholomew it was such a big thing on the internet. Who, who, um, and, and there was like polls. Do yeah. you think it's this? Never once was Jared on there. And I'm like, dude, it's yeah. fucking Jared. Like, how do you, if you follow Jared Leto, 30 Seconds Mars, I don't care, whatever form of Jared Leto, you know he has a twisted mind. Right. And like any of those videos <laughs> that like are like the long form videos, it always starts off with, you know, a, a short film yeah, by, by Bartholomew, Bartholomew Cummins. And you're just like, you're an asshole. Yeah, you are. You are. <laughs> let's, let's just rub it into the people being this is stupider. The... But there were those people like me that were like, it's fucking Jared Leto. Yeah. You need to add him to the poll. <laughs> yeah. This is his palm <laughs> other, more. Do other. Yeah. <laughs> Put another on there. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that was such a huge thing. And then when he came out, everybody was like, oh, I knew it. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You had no fucking clue. Yeah. Just like anybody that tells you they knew the ending of The Sixth Sense, they're fucking lying. Sorry, I'm just, I just had to say that. 
I just hate liars. But that's the thing, Jerry, the whole influence thing. Very big. He's a huge influencer. He is. He absolutely like, is. He, I mean, you know, he has, like, what, with Gucci. Um, oh, he's got, he dabbles in everything. Yeah. Everything. You can't even name him all. I'm sorry. I actually was reading an article one time where he was doing an interview at like CNN or some shit because he buys into these stocks for these uh, these apps and shit. Yeah, dude's like a fucking billionaire. I, I right, don't know. he is in everything. But, Dude has to be worth a lot of money. But it's but it's that thing though of like again like you know so you've built a worldwide influence and now like you know he's the face of Gucci. Yeah, you know. Outside of, it's a me, Pablo. Yeah. <laughs> what, what is it about this man that I love so much? I don't know. I don't, I don't. I don't. And that's the thing I think about. Okay, so that's the person that influences me. Why? Right. Who's he? To well, me. It's that odd thing. It should of, be somebody I fucking know. Or, you know? Or, like, it, it, it's that odd thing, and this is going to sound weird, but, like, Ric Flair. Like, like 80s Ric Flair. God. Okay. The Four Horsemen Ric Flair. Pi- I was just going to say, I'm picturing on with the Four Horsemen. Yeah. Thank you. You know, the suit. <laughs> yeah. You know, the whole, you the, know. The Liberace shit, yeah. Well, I mean, him talk, you know, talking about, you know, you know, I, I, Rolex wearing, lip kiss stealing, yeah. wheeling, dealing, yeah. lip, can't, can't hold these alligators down. Like, that guy. Like, should not have been an influence on me when I was a kid. Mm. But I wanted to be Ric Flair. Yeah. And I should have wanted to be Dusty Rhodes. Right. Like, Dusty Rhodes was the American dream. He was, you know, the son of a plumber. He, he, he I should have been able to identify more with Dusty Rhodes. Right. And I probably did identify with Dusty Rhodes, but I wanted to be Ric Flair. Right. Like, I wanted to wear the suits. I wanted to look smooth. I wanted to have my hair feathered like that. I, I you know, I wanted that lifestyle. Never achieved it. But, like, <laughs> when I was a kid, I rooted for Ric Flair, right. and like it was like that makes no sense because this guy over here yeah. is more or, or or represents more of what you are. Because everything else in my life, like you know, I listen to Springsteen. You know, Thunder Road is my favorite song. Like, right. You know, all this other stuff was like all working class stuff about me. But that one thing, right? I wanted to be Ric Flair. Yeah. Like you know, and I I don't know why that was, but that was like. Oh, man, if I could be that guy. Okay, I have two questions for you, okay? One, well, actually, one is a comment. One, isn't it crazy that Cody Rhodes is your, or, yeah, Cody Rhodes is your favorite wrestler now? No. Like, that's not a coincidence that you should have been Dusty Rhodes and not Ric Flair? No, I mean, I, I've thought about that. But, I mean, like, Cody's not his dad. I know that. Right. Uh, but I mean, like, it's like a thing of like, you know, I, I, I just came into it like, I, and I missed out on the stuff because I wasn't watching wrestling at the time, like the Stardust stuff and the dashing Cody Rhodes, but you know, but when he was in WWE the first time, you know, I picked up on Cody when he was in New Japan and he was becoming the American Nightmare, mm-hmm. and. When he came to AEW, he was the American Nightmare. And, right. You know, that's what I liked. I was like, oh, this guy's... You know, first off, again, he was coming to the ring dressed to the nines. Right. Like, to do interviews. Like, right. He wasn't coming out in a t-shirt and jeans. Right. Or, you know, he was coming out in a full suit because he was showing you he was ready to do right. business. Right, And then, like, when he came to the ring, it was, like, usually, like, in, like, Homelander attire. Like, right. you know, yeah. like... Like the big jacket oh and everything. I yeah. know, I know. So, I mean, from a professional wrestling standpoint, like I think I like Cody Rhodes because Cody Rhodes likes pomp and circumstance. Like you know, like his his entrance was big. Like in AEW, like he came on coming up to Cody Vader. Right, and, right. You know, in, in WWE, <laughs> the Cody Vader. In WWE, <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, in WWE, he's got like this giant, you know, pyro. Like, it's got to cost thousands of dollars every week for his pyro. Right, you yeah. Because it's just going off <laughs> yeah, everywhere. Yeah, the budget constantly. was yeah. sunk into his pyro. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, it, it's like he, he likes, in his own way, he's probably more like Ric Flair than he is like his dad. Right, From yeah. that standpoint. Right. You know, you know where, where Dusty was just coming down and, you know, I mean, even when he was in WWF, 
like that short period, like, you know, the polka dot period. Like, you know, his song was, you know, he's just a common man. <laughs> yeah. You know, Dusty came down wearing his little yeah, hat, his yeah. polka dot I shirt and that. trunks, shaking his ass, doing his thing, you know. Right. <laughs> oh, my God, I remember that. He's a common man. Yeah. All right, so here's my second part of that is a question. Okay. So if Jared Leto should not be influencing me if you think about it. Right. One, I'm poor. He's not. Right. <laughs> um, two, he's into beautiful women. I am not. Now, not that it would matter, but who should I be looking up to if you say you should have been looking up to Dusty Rose and not look for her? I don't know. Like, I don't know what the opposite of that is. Mm-hmm. Like, That's why I was asking you. I don't know. <laughs> right. Like, I mean, I, I, I do feel like, like you had, like you were heavily influenced by Chester Bennington. Yes, I, I like that was the, that was another big influence on you, and I, I feel like I mean that's more in line. Yeah. Um. You know, I mean, so like I, I can't say like you know, but like I don't know what the opposite of like Jared Leto is. Yeah, that's the problem. Like I can't sit there and say like you know, you know you you should be you should be influenced by X, not you know, but. I'm not saying you shouldn't be influenced by Jared Leto. I mean, you know, you, he, he's influenced you to be healthier, which Wait, is a good no. thing. I wasn't expecting you. I just thought maybe you had somebody in mind. If no. you were saying that about you and you were like, Jared Leto, he influences you, why? Because <laughs> that is a big question. Why? Who should it be? Yeah. I don't know. Me neither. Yeah. Because like, at, at this point, I'm not in, like, I... I, I I shouldn't say I'm not influenced, but I try very heavily not to be influenced by people. Right. Like, I mean, you can't help it. Yeah. And it's not even like famous people. You're influenced by other people in your life. You know, your right. family, your friends, whatever. But I, I, I try not to let, like, I, I like to think, like, I, I, we've talked about, like, I, I, I've bought, okay, I was influenced by Pat McAfee. Because I bought that for a while. I was drinking that liquid death water. Yes. Yeah, you were on a big liquid death water thing. Yeah. You know they have so much more now? They do. They have like ones that taste like like stuff like lemon lime. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They get the flavored stuff now and everything. But like I saw him drink. I I was like, is he drinking beer? (laughs) Is that like canned vodka? (laughs) Like It was like because it's called liquid death. Like you wouldn't think it's fucking water. water, right? I'm like. Dude, it's fucking. Noon. I mean, but that's what the whole gimmick is. Yeah. Yeah. So like, at first it was like, well, I just gotta try this. So you were influenced by a gimmick. Well, I was. Yeah, well, I was influenced by Pat McAfee drinking something. But and when you whole, find out it's water, I'm like, well, okay, let me give that a try. But that's the whole thing, you know. Even if you watch like a Burger King commercial, you're influenced. Oh, I gotta go get those fucking fries. You right. know what I mean? Like, I'm not. I'm not influenced. I, there is no commercial in this world that would make me fucking run to Burger King to buy anything from there. Right. You know what I mean? But if, you know, Walmart said they were having, you know, $2.50 squish mellows, my ass would be in line. You know right. what I mean? Like, I'm influenced by shit like but, that. But that's not an influence. It's just something you like. Oh, I love those. Yeah, I shouldn't say that. Yeah, yeah I get it, but it's like just, the in, the influ- there's more the, than the, just a person that can influence you. But it's more. But influence is more about a person than it is, because it's like, like what is an influencer? An influencer is somebody who, like, is on Instagram and they're paid to wear these specific shoes and this bathing suit, and like everything you see in this picture, you can buy. Right. And here's how. Yeah. Because you want to buy it because I have it. Right. You know what I mean? Like that's what an influencer is. Like, you know, like that picture is going to include a link to six different websites yeah. because that's is where you can buy the pillows you see in the couch in the background. Right. This is where you can buy the shoes you see. Yeah. This is where you can buy the dog purse. Like, that's what an influencer is. See, this is why okay. I'm so glad that, one, I don't watch commercials. Right. And, two, I don't watch reality TV. Right. But, the, <laughs> uh, but that's what it, like... That's what like an, an influencer is. It's somebody who you are in, you are influenced to buy something because that person has it. Right. And Which that's is what I'm saying. I'm glad I'm not. Right. Yeah. So I like a, a, commer- really a commercial is an influence, yes, but it's 
it's a more direct influence. Right. You know, like that you expect that from a commercial. Okay. That's the expectation I get for like when okay, we're gonna do a commercial break. Well, I'm gonna get two minutes of people trying to get me to buy shit. <laughs> I, that's what a commercial's job is. <laughs> Whether that be a movie, a TV show, or, or fast food. You or fast food. <laughs> like you are trying to get me to no, buy something for right. the next two minutes. You are so right. That's but that's the job of a commercial. Yeah. Whereas an influencer is somebody yeah. that you are trying to be like because gotcha. they're influencing you. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's not a commercial. So that raises the question even more. Who should I be looking up right. to? Because it absolutely should not be Jared Leto. Right. <laughs> but at the same time, like going back to the original, like these girls who were influenced in a way because Taylor Swift showed up at a Chiefs game. Right. You know, and now all of a sudden they're buying Travis Kelsey jerseys. Without, and they have no idea who he is. Right. Like, it's like... That's just blind influence. Right. Like, yeah. you know, you are blindly going and doing this. Yeah, at least if I was going to be influenced by somebody, I would want to be like, well, who is that? What's this about? Right. Know, I would investigate. I wouldn't just be like, ah, i seen that shirt. But I do have to say something. I was watching a Coldplay video one time. And he was, it was a live video. Like, they were on stage. Yeah. Actually, it wasn't even a video. It was one of those, you know how I have Muse on? Yeah. Her, they recorded some kind of festival they were at. Right. Well, Coldplay was at the same festival. Right. It was, because he's all into, like, raising money for children to right. feed them. Yeah. It, which, I, I like Chris, what's his last name? I can't remember. Martin? Yeah. Yeah, I like him. But anyways, he had on this shirt and these pants that I was like, I fucking love them clothes. Right. I need to find out how you get these. Right. And he's out there trying to raise money to feed the poor, basically. Right. In other countries. Fantastic. Right. Whatever. So I'm like, well, he's influencing me right now because I need to go online and find these clothes and see where I can buy them. Right. You know, and donate to you're whatever. Ta- you're, you're taking a picture of, a, yes. of, of him on stage and Googling it to try to right. find. Well, yeah. You can't afford the clothes. Yeah, right. But, like, he influenced me to do that because if I could afford them, I would have bought the, just at least a shirt. The right. shirt, the, the design. And he makes them all himself, them design. Right. But it kind of pissed me off that I couldn't afford it because he's trying to raise money. Right. For, like, dude. Yeah. Like, seriously, who. I wasn't influenced by him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, I mean, I remember, I mean, there was a time where I wanted to dress like Freddie Mercury. Wait, which time? Oh, the 80s. Which, which Freddie Mercury? Oh, the, fr- fr- the Freddie Mercury, like, like, live from Wembley Stadium, Freddie with, like, the, the yellow jacket. Okay. And the white, like, when he, the white t-shirt underneath with the, the red pants. The white t-shirt with the cigarettes rolled up in the sleeve? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I wanted, like, I, I want, there was a time <laughs> where, like, like, that, that, that yellow, that, that, that yellow jacket, like, the buckles in the front. Yes. Like, that's an iconic jacket. Yes. Like, for years, yeah. I wanted that jacket. Right. Like, I thought that was the coolest fucking jacket in the world. Um, I wanted, <laughs> and this is going to sound really weird, but at the end of Star Wars, the first Star Wars movie, New Hope, during the award ceremony, Luke is wearing a jacket. And I thought that jacket was the coolest jacket in the world when I was a kid. Like I thought, like I need to have that jacket. Right. That where can I get that jacket? Like okay. you, know, you know, that was so the the jacket that Marty McFly wore in Back to the Future didn't influence. No. Didn't want that jacket no. at all. <laughs> I, but I did. I did want the jacket the 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 Viper pilots wore in the original Battlestar Galactica. Okay. I thought those were badass too. Okay, well I'll top you. Okay. I actually did own a few likable jackets that. Sonny Crockett one on Miami yeah. Vice. Oh, yeah. Like, the one gray one that had that, oh, it was a beautiful yeah. jacket. Yeah, we found it somewhere. And they, yeah. I, 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 had a, I had a Miami Vice phase where, like, I had a couple of, like, past, pastel Oh, yeah, I used to dress like him. With, with that socks, with those socks, shoes, those, and I, those I had pants. The, I had the jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Rolled the sleeves up and everything, yeah. yeah. So like yeah, I, I, I went got that. some class pictures actually taken like that. Yeah. And I'm very embarrassed about. It. I also had, excuse me, like to add my own little flair and touch to it. I had a fedora, <laughs> and, 
I had I had a gray fedora. Well, he did actually wear a fedora in a yeah. few episodes. Right. I, I'm I'm reminding of one now, and it's actually the one that Bruce Willis was in. Yeah. But anyways, go ahead. But I had a, like it was like a gray fedora <laughs> oh my God. with a black band. Like I just like the only hat I wanted as a child was a Duran Duran hat. Yeah, I just oh like, I had to have one. I have one now, but like I I wore that get up to work to to school like one time. <laughs> And was like mocked and ridiculed. Because like, oh, like, you know, like, like I was like a season like, one Miami Vice guy. Like yeah. I'm like I was all in, <laughs> and like I, I got mocked and ridiculed for wearing it. So I never wore that get up again. Like I went really? back to like jeans and t shirt. Yeah. And like three months later, like everybody's wearing that shit. Like I you motherfuckers. Stopped. I never stopped. Oh. I didn't give a shit. I was being made fun of before then. I didn't care that I was being fun. I was where I was Sonny Crockett, and that was weird because I'm a female, but I was just so. In- I mean, I'm that, that so be, into that shit. It became church clothes. Like, I wore that shit to church. I think I wore the pants to sh- the, the They were like a peach, a light yeah. pink color, but they were like... Especially when I moved to Florida, because the clothes Panama Jack yeah. resembled the type of clothes. Yeah. He, it is so much easier for me to get a hold of that shit. Yeah. The only thing was, is Panama Jack was written all over the fucking back of the shirt. Yeah. But, you know, you wore the jacket and nobody saw it. Yeah, so, yeah. like, yeah. I, but I, then in the Florida heat, you were like, I can't wear this jacket anymore. How the fuck did he wear them in all those episodes? Eh, hey, fuck, hot as fuck down there. And he was in Miami. I was only in Daytona. Yeah. I, I was like, how the hell? Because, oh, my God, the heat. How did he do that? I don't know. Like, I, I, I watch all that stuff, like, when you see, like, like people in, like, suits yeah. in Miami. I'm like, yeah. how, 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 how do you survive? I just, I, the tie, I would be like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, living down there, I can attest to that. I just, I always wondered that. Hmm. Yeah. The heat will kill you. It will. <laughs> or either that or make you insane. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Reminiscent, that's for sure. Indeed. Where were we talking about wrestling? Have, uh, we've gone off on a. Oh, huge, Taylor Swift. Taylor Swifter. Swift. Yeah. Swift. Swift. Taylor Swifter. 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 Yeah. Swifter. <laughs> 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 Here's my Taylor I, Swifter. I'm sure she's a little dusty now. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, she's been used a lot. Whoa. Hey, who's I, this? Oh, come on. How many fucking songs does she have out there about the I, men she's had? I, all I'm I can't saying even count is that high. <laughs> direct your email. She has had more men than Elizabeth Taylor was married, okay? Right. Direct your emails to <laughs> nancy at hobie.com. Well, I, I'm very upset. I, I found out some bad news this week, and I'm just, I'm very upset. Okay, what's that? <laughs> um, the... Jonas Brothers getting divorced from the woman from Game of Thrones oh, in the yeah, I'm very about upset that about ago. that. I thought you know. No, I was very, very sad. I had a re I was reading something on my phone on break or something that popped up. I was like, What? And of course I clicked on it because it said Jonas. <laughs> you know what I mean? The Jonas's. Um I was like, What the hell's going on here? I yeah, apparently it's very controversial. But here's the weird thing about it. I didn't even know they had kids, and and more than one. I was like, "What? When did this happen? Like, oh. you kept that private, but this isn't. <laughs> you know? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, I'm very upset about this. They were such a cute couple. Yeah, well, I like the Jonas Brothers. I like to see them happy. Yeah, yeah. like Nick, his wife. Whoo, she's hot. She's in all, Hollywood too. Yeah. All, all I know is, you know, apparently it's very controversial. There, there is. A it's whole, controversial. Yeah, apparently, there's a whole to-do about, you know... Oh, the shit she was smack-talking about him. I don't, on, I don't know. I don't, yeah, know. I, I don't know to believe that or not. It's all fucking gossip shit. Yeah. I'm just sad that they're... They haven't been married that long. I'm sad that they're parting ways. Because <sighs> well, I like them both. Okay, sir. Uh, Terrible. Why even bother? <laughs> so, yeah, that was the sad news that I bought... Found out this week. Yeah, I could have swore there's one other thing, but I can't. my mind's mush at this point. Okay, well, let's wrap it up. Yes, anything you'd like to add to the proceedings? That's it. No, thank you for uh, having me. And you never said oh, why. Again, again <laughs> Ian is out with the. He's got the vid. Uh, it's still. Yeah. So he still needed two weeks. 
apparently, and they yeah. kept saying it's only five days now. Yeah, well, apparently I mean, he he said he was sick and you know he got the cough and the whole thing. Still for two weeks, oh, he must be miserable. He must be. I mean, so. I. I I don't know. That shit's nasty. I, I didn't want to let you know. Um, you did ask uh, Thad about his um, favorite pumpkin beers. Oh, yeah. Oh, and real quick, his videos that he sent. Oh, my God. I don't even like ACDC, AC -DC. but yeah. I, that was fantastic. I was like, Joe, God damn, you did a good job. I forgot to respond to you, so uh, fantastic job. Dad, I'm so sad that I missed it, but Duran Duran was great, so I'm not, not sad I missed that. Yeah. <laughs> um, for, first of all, I want to address the simple fact that, Thad, you, you are not in sole possession of first place in the fantasy football league. Um, I believe if you take a closer look at the standings, uh, dun, dun, dun. you will see that SA Football Rules is... Who's that? That's me. Uh, what's this? Oh, South Allegheny. Yes. Because I have scored more points than you overall. Oh, no, Thad. What yeah. happened? Well, he's 3-0. and I'm 3-0. and and, uh, but I've just scored more points. So I am in first place. He is in second place. Step it up, we are technically, technically tied for first. How long has it been since you won, Sean? Oh, it's been a long time. Yeah, see, Thad, you guys step it up. We don't want to break this streak. <laughs> but I've never won this league. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I've never won our has league. Has Thad? No. No, that, oh. that, that's a day that... If that ever happens, <laughs> that, that's going to be see, like... See, Thad, you need to make that happen because I need to see the reaction to it all. Oh, I need to see the aftermath. No, Please, no. Thad, get it I done. Can, I do this even, one thing for me, dude. I can't even imagine the, <laughs> the... You do this for me and I promise I'll be on opening night for your thing next year. I promise. Because Duran Duran won't come twice. <laughs> anyway, so he, he's, his, his pumpkin beers that he likes... Oh, yes. Um... Well, pumpkin donuts he likes from Dunkin'. <laughs> and Southern Tier Pumpkining Beer. Oh, I don't know if I've ever heard of that. Yeah. I know Angelina was drinking something up at Backdraft the other night that was pumpkin something. Yeah. It was good. She let me try it. It was actually good. And I don't know if you saw, I sent this to you, but Stork also listed his, his two favorite. You sent it to me where? I said, I, I texted this to you. Oh, I'm sorry. Um... His two stork from the Posada Geek podcast, uh, he stated his two favorite uh, pumpkin beers are Stephen Point Whole Hog Pumpkin Beer. Wow, and, that's a mouthful. And Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Pumpkin Ale. They're, they're both ales, excuse me. Wait. Stephen Point Whole Hog Pumpkin Ale and Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Pumpkin Ale. I think I've heard of that Kentucky one? Uh, I've heard of something with Kentucky and pumpkin, so it might have been that, but it, I mean, that was like a couple years ago, or I, maybe last year. I, I don't know. know. It's could have been this year. I don't know the way my brain works, but I could have swore I've heard of that before. I don't know. I've never heard of any of that shit. Why are you so goddamn down on pumpkins? They are very lucrative in the game of Animal Crossing. Okay? Oh, is, so what? why are you so down on pumpkins? I'm not. But, you know, you they should be in a pie. <laughs> and, and they should be in a, a roll. <laughs> I've gone over this before. I don't need pumpkin in my beer. I don't. I don't need to taste the uh, a fall earthy taste. I, I just want to taste fucking beer. Okay. When I drank, I yeah. wasn't looking for taste. I was looking for. But quantity. you don't drink anymore. Right anymore? Yes. But when I did, like if I was drinking now, I would not be drinking this shit. Yeah. Like I, I would not be like you know. No, oh, let me uh, give me the uh, the pale ale with the uh, the pumpkins. But yeah, no, fuck <laughs> that shit. I don't no. think I've ever heard anybody order it like that. I don't, I don't know how people fucking order this shit. <laughs> it's like fucking wine. Oh my god! These people and their what? wine and their beers. Like, fuck You're that. You're not a wine drinker. Oh, I've I always, drink wine. I've always been done. Like, well, yes. <laughs> I know. You may me find me when I ordered that case from California. Let me swish this in my mouth and mm, I can taste the, <laughs> no. the earth in it. And you know, I have never it. done that. I right. just drink wine. Right. But, like, I, I'm just like, you know, let me just fucking swallow so this. So let me ask you real quick because I know you want to end this. So the episode of Bob's Burger where uh, they get on the train 
to do the wine tasting tour and the kids are stuck in the back trying to get the chocolate fountain that dude that was doing all that shit was it irking you as you were watching that it doesn't irk me but it's it, it's like it's that weird thing of like and i get it like like wine like to me like wine like it, wine has become this thing of like everybody drinks it and to me like wine is like upper crust I don't know. I have a lot of friends that drink, and right. wine is not their go-to. Right, but, but I have a few, but not everybody. Right, but there's a, but, but it's become a thing of like, like, like everybody drinks wine. Like it, it's a very popular thing now. Like, and everybody thinks they're like a connoisseur and shit. And like same thing with beer. Like beer's become like this thing of like it's, it's no longer. Like beer was like the working man's drink. Like, mm-hmm. you went, you had yourself a Budweiser, you felt good about yourself, you know, you, you, I, I did a day's work, let me drink a couple of Buds, let me smack my kid around, you know, that, that was like what you did. Now, beer is become... <laughs> <laughs> now... That's why you didn't say kick the dog as I kick, went out for a smoke, yeah, to kick, take the garbage out that the old lady's been bitching about. Yeah, I, I got, you know, yeah, I mean, that was <laughs> like, it, like... Fuck? I, and where's the uh, chaser with a fucking shot? Yeah, I mean, come on. I, I, I gotta smoke like a you know a pack of Marlboro <laughs> Reds while I take out the trash. Oh you know. my god! <laughs> yeah, you know, going back soft, to Schneider with his arm rolled up in the cigarettes. <laughs> soft pack, you know. <laughs> soft pack. Yeah. Oh my god! But uh, <laughs> but it's a it, it, it's that it's that thing of like it went from being like to me, <clears throat> it went from being the the working man's alcohol of choice. To now it's like this, you know, if you're not drinking a beer that's that, that, that you, you, you swish around your palate and, you know, you're, you're picking out the herbs and spices or whatever the fuck goes into it, like, it's like, oh, you're not drinking beer. Like, you know, ooh, you know, no, I, I, I'm like, I just have that working class mentality, like, it, which is weird because I just said, you know, I looked up to Rick Flair when I was a kid, but I've always had like this working class mentality when it comes to shit. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, like to me, like beer you know, is just. What, a, what is your beer of choice? So everybody knows. I mean, back in the day. No, no, we want to know what your beer of choice is now because we're talking now. If if you were to sit, if you were to say you have to have a beer right now, I would probably have a Yangling. That's not a bad beer. I'm not going to complain about that. Like, it, uh, I was hoping you throw something that I can complain about. Well, I mean, like. <laughs> If I was here's the thing though, if I was buying beer, I would probably be buying Bush. All right, yeah. I know not Bush Apple, Bush Peach, just Bush. Yeah, just Bush. Yeah. You know, which is just disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's nasty. Like, like I would be buying some, the barrel shit. Some it's some the foam would, converted back into liquid. Like I would buy, be buying something cheap because my my goal when I drank beer was to get fucked up, not enjoy the beer. I drink to enjoy it. Yes. Mo- like, I want to taste those flavors. I want to taste, you know, what it's supposed to right. be. Right, right. I don't, I can give a shit less. Like, I, and I very rarely drink beer anymore, but I still love the beer, because I do the, the seltzers seltzer, now, yeah. mostly press, but right now I got the watermelon White Claw. I want to taste watermelon. Right. Whereas, like, like, when I drank... Like my go-to for the longest time was, um, uh, can't even name, name it now. It used to be brewed in Latrobe. Rolling Rock. Rolling Rock. Yeah, I drank Rolling Rock all the time because it was brewed in Latrobe. But I couldn't. Right. But I, I was like, I know I, wa- I took the tour. Right. I, I, wa- I wanted to stay local, but I didn't want to drink Iron City because Iron City was shit beer. Like that. That was like. Yeah. Like that. There was a line. You know what? My father loved Stroh's. I didn't like that beer. Stroh's is a good beer. Do they even make that anymore? No, I don't think so. But isn't there a form of it? Because I could have swore I seen... There might be. I'm sorry, excuse me. But I wouldn't buy it for any reason because I, I remember even drinking it, you, you know, sneaking beer and shit. Yeah. I'd be like, ugh. But that was a rare occasion that that man drank that because he was more of a 
Heineken and Labatt's, but only from Canada. Right. None of the American shit. You know, he was that kind of guy. Like, or a dark ale from Canada. Right. They love their fucking dark ale up there. Like, for me, like, special occasion beer was Moosehead. You know what? That was another one he liked, Moosehead. Yeah. He actually had a hat and a sweatshirt he wore in Canada that said Moosehead on it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, like that was like... Moosehead, the, spe- yeah. the special occasion beer was Moosehead. You're right. He did. He like That was always on tap at the bar. Yeah. That and Stroh's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which was weird. And Budweiser. Right. But, uh, yeah. So, like, for me, like, that was, like, the special... Like, oh, this is a special occasion. I spent a little extra money and get a case of Moosehead. Right, head. yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, you know, normally it's like, you know, 10 bucks for, for a case of, like, you know, yeah. Straub. Now, I can't tell you, like, when we would come back from Canada at the border, because you get one alcohol, one cigarette per kit, you know, person, yeah. doesn't even matter if they're kids, apparently, they would use me. Yeah. My, and she would get this dark L, and I, I wish I would remember the name of it, because I'm telling you, one, one bottle would put you down. Yeah. Like, because she would, she would savor that shit, like, all fucking year long, but only because she could only handle one bottle at a time. Didn't yeah. figure that out until I was an adult. Yeah. But... I wish I knew that it's like a dark, it's so like sickening thick. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not sweet, it's thick, and yeah. it has that dark ale taste to it. Nah. That's, I don't like Guinness. I've tried Guinness. No. Like, but for some reason, I like Samuel Adams. Yeah. Like, but I Gu- don't know but, why. But Guinness, even like like when they pour it like from a, uh, like a tap, like yeah. it has that special nozzle yeah. and everything because of yeah. how thick it is and yeah. everything. Yeah. 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 Like, it's like having a loaf of bread in my mouth. <laughs> It's very yeasty. Yeah, very yeah. Yeasty. But Samuel Adams, they're like um, uh, special ones. I yeah, like, they're, I they're like the lager, ones. Yeah. I don't know why I like it. Yeah, yeah. Well, whatever. So there we go. Just remember, uh, you can. Uh, God, we went down weird rabbit holes tonight, yeah. like from fucking eighty movies to beer. <laughs> <laughs> remember, there are a number of different ways you can reach out and touch us. I can send us an email like Thad does. That email address is pittsburghnerd at yahoo.com. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Mastodon. Just search Pittsburgh Nerd Podcast. We're very, very easy to find. And we are on a number of podcasting networks. You can find us on the Tangent Bound Network, We Be Geeks Network, and the Pod Breed Network. Uh, just give them a Google search. You can find all the other great podcasts they have to offer. And lastly, as always, we want to thank you, dear listener, for checking us out each and every week. We can't thank you enough for your support. And so on that note, the dreamer has awakened. See ya.